like a bird. My soul escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we have escaped. My help is in the name of the Lord. The snare is broken and we have escaped. My help is in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is nothing that I need that he won't supply. There is nothing that I need that he won't provide when I believe. When I believe. And so I say to the mountain, move. And so I say to the mountain, get out of my way, because I believe. Lord, I believe. Well, welcome. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I just want to encourage you tonight to go back, and we do have archived on Facebook, and uh, we've archived in YouTube under Covenant Christian Center uh, of Odessa. We've archived our camp meeting there, and we were uh, uh, ministering on the supernatural. And I just encourage you to go back and, 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 and t take some time and go back and listen to those things. You know, the, the supernatural doesn't happen accidentally. And, uh, uh, you know, people think, well, you know, uh, uh, the, the supernatural is a sovereign move of God, you know, and it's something that God uh, decides when he's going to do it. And nothing could be further from the truth. There's very little that God decides when it's going to actually happen. And uh, he does have set times and he has set seasons. But most of the things that happen to you, God doesn't determine those times and seasons. You determine those times and seasons. And you know, one of the things that we, we say, and it's absolutely true, is that, you know, God doesn't determine how he's going to relate to you. And God doesn't determine the things that he, how he's going to handle. Or, or l l let's say it this way. Specifically talking about the handling of adversity, God does not determine what he's going to do for you in moments of adversity. You determine what he's going to do for you. You're the one that sets the parameters. You're the one with your faith and with your belief and with your declaration. You're the one that sets the parameters of what God can do for you. Because he can work within the faith level that you have. He can work within the word level that you use. But... He's not going to go outside of that faith level. And only in very rare situations. And then he's operating in the gift of faith. So it's still something to do with your faith. And something to do with releasing your faith. Anyway, praise God. Hallelujah. I just encourage you that the supernatural is, it doesn't work like people think it does. It's a, it's a totally separate dimension that God deals with people in. But it's easy to get into that dimension. And so go back and listen to those things and kind of take a look at that. What I wanted to talk to you for just a minute uh, about tonight was, um, you know, when, when Pastor Gail and I, many, many years ago, we went to this church. It was a very large church. And we taught the New Believers class. And uh, we, uh, uh, we, we, there were four different classes that we taught in the, in the New Believers class. And one of them, it was what the church was a Pentecostal church, is what they believed were the essentials for uh, people to receive once they got saved. The, what were the essentials that people should have gotten? And one of those items, and, and, and we won't bore you with the rest of them, but one of those items was speaking in tongues. And that it was, was critical, that they believed that it was critical that people speak in tongues. And uh, that they, you know, get born again. They receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I would, we, we certainly echo that. We certainly agree with that. We think that that's an essential part of Christianity. What's most essential is the baptism of power. And uh, the, the Bible says, you, should, you know, that Jesus in talking to his disciples said, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And that what tongues represents is the initial evidence of the indwelling of that power. It's the initial evidence that you got that, that you received that power. But there are multiple purposes to the to to uh, tongues, and the multiple reasons why you you should use tongues, why you should speak in tongues. And uh, what happens is in the churches today, and you know, in in, in all the time that I've been in churches. Um, it, 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 
the church spends most of its time trying to convince people to actually receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and actually get it. It doesn't teach them what to do with it, you know. And uh, so I want to talk just for a minute tonight about what do you do with it? What, you know, what, what, are the, what are the functions of tongues? What are the things that you should do with tongues? And, and, and just to, to start us off, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now, in 1 Corinthians 12, the Apostle Paul talks about the gifts of the Spirit. And tongues and interpretation of tongues are two of the gifts of the, of the Spirit. There's nine gifts of the Spirit. And tongues and interpretation represent two of those uh, represent two of those gifts. And uh, over in 14 now, 1 Corinthians 14, he begins to develop the idea of those of some of those gifts a little bit more. He says, follow after love and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So there in the first paragraph, there's two, he, he talks about two of the specific purposes for tongues. One of them is, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. So it's a language which you can speak directly to God. You're not speaking to men, you're speaking directly to God. Now, that is done by faith. Everything we're going to talk about tonight is done by faith. Uh, to speak uh, unto God directly is done by faith. And I'll do that. I'll actually make that declaration sometimes when I get ready to, to pray in tongues. I'll make the declaration before God. I said, God, your word says that he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto you. And I want to speak to you. I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to men. I don't want to know the wisdom of men. I don't want to know the direction of men. I want to know you. I want to speak to you. I want to, I want to have a conversation with you. And that's what, the, that's what we just read, that that's part of it. How be it? In the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. That's the second item. That's a key item. Now, the word that is translated mysteries there means that which was hidden not from you, but it was hidden for you. It was laid up for you. So to begin to speak in tongues, you reveal mysteries. You speak forth mysteries. You speak forth things that you don't know. Once again, these are faith issues. These are the releases of faith. And so... Sometimes if I'm beginning, you know, I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to pray in tongues. And you should do it every day. You should take a few minutes and pray in tongues every single day. You know, if it's two minutes, if it's five minutes, if it's 15 minutes, if you can stretch it to an hour, whatever. But the idea is you should do it every single day. Because in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. You want to speak those mysteries. The way the Word of God works is it must be spoken out in order to be performed. You know, under the Old Covenant, the, uh, uh, the, there was an office of the prophet. And the function of the prophet was to receive the Word of God. He would receive directly the Word of God. He was responsible for a correct interpretation of that Word. He was responsible to correctly hear from God and to release those words out into the atmosphere. It was critical that what God wanted to speak to his people got released out into the atmosphere. And you'll catch the purpose of this for a moment. So what happened is he would speak to the prophet. The prophet would speak that word out. The objective of it was to get the atmosphere saturated with the word of God. To have the atmosphere saturated with the presence of God, because if you're speaking the word of God, you're, you're releasing the presence of God. Amen. Then Amen. the people could hear it. The people could receive it and believe it. Their faith could rise as a result, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So their faith could rise, and that permitted God to be able to do what he wanted. Now... There's nothing that's changed about that under the New Covenant except that it's done in tongues for the individual believer. There's still an office of the prophet, even under the New Testament, but the office of the prophet is different under the New Covenant than it was under the Old. What you got, you got this covenant of power. You got this covenant, and part of the power is the ability to prophesy over yourself. So you can prophesy in tongues. See, one of the key things about tongues is you don't know what you're saying. Or many times you don't know what you're saying. So the idea is if you prophesy mysteries, 
you're calling forth those things that be not as though they are, that you don't even know what you're calling forth. You don't even know how to call forth. The, you know, God, once again, particularly in the realm of the supernatural, God has a way of doing things in the supernatural that you can't even fathom. I mean, we had something happen the other day where I, a couple of days ago, I got a phone call from somebody and I knew it was so supernatural. I knew it was God moving supernaturally for me. Just the direction of the call, what happened in the call, the things that happened in the call. I knew it was God wanting. Now, I've been speaking that. I've been calling that forth. I've been praying about it in tongues. But all of a sudden, here it was. Here's God answering what I'm actually praying about. And he's answering it supernaturally. And tongues plays a part of that. Tongues has a, 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 a role in that. So what tongues allows you to do is to prophesy mysteries. To prophesy over yourself things that you want to have happen that you don't even know how to explain. See, God has a way of doing things that you never thought of. That you never considered. And when you prophesy that in tongues, it gives God permission to do that because you don't even know what you're saying. So the idea is that we speak in tongues. We're speaking mysteries and we're speaking directly to God. What we're saying is, you know, we're calling forth those things that be not as though they are in the language of the Spirit. Because the prayer language that you receive or the, the Holy Ghost language that you receive, the language of, of, of your prayer language of tongues, that is unique to you. And it's what you use. It is the Holy Ghost's ability to agree with you. What happens when you begin to pray in tongues and you involve the Holy Ghost in that process? Now, you can, you can babble on in strange words, but I'm, I'm talking about praying in tongues where you've invited the Holy Ghost to, to pray with you. All of a sudden, the Holy Ghost begins to pray with you, he begins to pray through you, and he begins to pray the perfect will of God. That's what happens in tongues. See, you don't have the capacity in your natural mind to pray the perfect will of God. But tongues, inspired by the Holy Ghost, tongues partnered by the Holy Ghost, is praying the perfect will of God because the Holy the Holy Ghost is God. So it's one of the one of the most powerful things you can do if you you're believing God for the realm of the supernatural. Pray in tongues, prophesy in tongues. There's no real difference between those two because you're speaking mysteries and you're speaking unto God. So when you begin to pray, what happens is. You're dim when you begin to pray in tongues, you are demonstrating faith in his word. You are demonstrating that you believe what that word said about mysteries. That you believe what that word said about uh, uh, the next item. Let's just look at the next item here. He that prophesieth speaketh not, but he that prophesieth speaketh unto men for edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. He that prophesieth edifieth the church. Now, so this is another function of the power of the Holy Ghost, or the, or, or the function of the Holy Ghost is to edify yourself. To edify means to build up, to encourage, to strengthen. If you're a little bit down, or you kind of got the blues, or you got the blahs, or something like that, praying in tongues will cure that. Praying in tongues will take you out of the blues. It'll take you out of the blahs. It's one of the fastest ways to get out. There are really only two biblical ways to get out of depression or oppression or discouragement. One of them is praying in tongues. The other one is, is worship. Um, those two are the God-ordained methodologies to get you out of the blues of the blahs. And you can't do either one for any real length of time and remain discouraged. So uh, once again, worship is certainly one of the ways that you can do it. But tongues represents... Uh, you know, there's multiple things that you can do with tongues, but certainly one of them is to edify yourself. Now, I want you to know, we just read, It's he's talking about the function of New Testament prophecy. He that prophesies speaketh unto men for edification, exhortation, and comfort. It later on says that he that interprets what he speaks accomplishes the same prophetic function. So if you are functioning in both tongues and interpretation of tongues, you are doing the equivalent of all New Testament prophecy. 
you're, and you're prophesying things that you don't really know uh, how to prophesy. See, what happens when you begin to speak in tongues is you cross over into the unseen realm. You cross over into the realm that you, you don't know what's going on in there. You can't function in there, but your words have weight. Your words have power because they're ushered to the realm of the supernatural by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost carries those words into the realm of the supernatural and begins to deal with them because once again, the Holy Ghost is God. And so he begins to carry, carry, uh, carry those words over there and, and, and uh, carry them into the realm of the, the, the supernatural where God can make those things happen. And in the interest of time, we won't turn there, but look at 1 Corinthians 15 when you go home. And, and spend some time looking at 1 Corinthians 15 because he talks about the difference between the natural realm and the spirit realm. And basically what he says is that things begin in the natural realm, but they get carried over to the spirit realm. That's what happens with tongues. See, you decide that you're going to pray in tongues. You do that with your natural mind, with your your uh, your soulish uh, uh, persona, your ability to... Uh, to, to make a decision to speak in spiritual terms, in spiritual language, you decide that personally. You make a decision in the realm of the natural to do that. But when you begin to pray in tongues, all of a sudden it carries over into the spirit realm. And now you've given the Holy Spirit permission to begin to do things for you that he didn't have before. So you cross over to the unseen realm. You begin to call forth those things that be not as though they are in the unseen realm. It demonstrates faith in his word. It demonstrates faith in him. It demonstrates your belief in what the Bible says about the, 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 the supernatural. Um, he begins to, he, as, as we go on here in the interest of time, I'll just tell you some of these items. One of them is it says you give thanks well. When you begin to pray in tongues, you give thanks well. Now, my interpretation of giving thanks well is praise and adoration and thanksgiving. In other words, it's a means of praising God at a higher level. It's a means of offering thanksgiving to God at a higher level than your natural language. You can speak in the language of the Spirit. You can give thanks well, better, more prosperously in the realm of the Spirit. And you can praise at a higher order of prayer. And, and we'll see that happen sometimes in worship where we we'll just begin to worship. And all of a sudden you just cross over and you begin to worship in tongues. It's a higher order of worship. It's a higher level. And all of a sudden you're worshiping in a language that is not your own. You're worshiping with the Holy Ghost, worshiping with you. And everything changes in that dimension. It's just a totally different dimension. One of the things that, another one of the things that I found is a great power of the Holy Ghost is it will help you to keep from sinning with your mouth. You know, a lot of times you, you know, it, it's just, it's easy to pop off the wrong thing. It's easy to say the wrong thing. It's easy to utter the wrong uh, comment. It's easy to, uh, uh, somebody was telling me that, uh, I, my, my, my sister-in-law was telling me that, that uh, about uh, her mother, who was such a precious, genteel woman, who, who, who was, a, and a, was a godly woman, and she got uh, Alzheimer's and dementia. And that in her later years, this, this godly woman, this precious godly woman, all of a sudden began cursing people, you know, and, and, uh, uh, and, and said, well, she didn't know what she was doing. And that's what happens to you, you see. You, there's a trained level, a uh, trained, T-R-A-I-N-E-D, level of response in you to, you can be angry and you can respond angrily to things. If you train yourself to respond in tongues, you won't sin with your mouth. It'll keep you from entering into a, a measure of, of condemnation or a measure of speaking or a measure of speaking unkindly or a, a, a dissension or discouragement or it'll keep you from sinning with your mouth because you train yourself to speak in tongues. I can remember situations that happened where that happened to me and I realized anything that comes out of my mouth at a natural level is going to be sin here and it's not going to further my purposes of what I want to do with God so I'm going to pray in tongues oh hallelujah thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus so 
Uh, once again, now, it, it does say that tongues and interpretation is the equivalent of prophecy. So you can prophesy over yourself using tongues. You can prophesy mysteries. You can prophesy things that you don't know. You can prophesy the supernatural of things that you don't even know. See, everybody should want God to move supernaturally for them. Everybody should want God to do the things that they don't even know to ask. You don't even know how to ask for those things or how to, how to believe for them. But you can. And tongues gives you a methodology to do that. It gives you a way to do that. It gives you a, a, just a, a, an entrance way into the things of the Spirit and an ability to speak in the realms of the Spirit that you don't otherwise have, that you just don't, don't uh, otherwise have. The Bible also talks about tongues as the ability to build yourself up in your most holy faith. That's a powerful thing. Um, your, your most holy faith being the faith of God rising up on the inside of you to accomplish God's purposes. And you can get that by praying in tongues. You can build yourself up in that faith. When you invite the Holy Spirit to participate with you, you invite the Holy Spirit to pray with you and you begin to pray in tongues, what happens? You begin to build yourself up in your most holy faith. That's a, I, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't begin to understand the fullness of most holy faith, but if the Bible says that by praying in tongues you can build yourself up in your most holy faith, then I'm going to do it. Then I want to do it. Because there's a place of acceptance of the truth there for that. You know. Um, finally, you know, in the realm of the supernatural, one of the most powerful things that you can do is to call forth those things that be not as though they are. If there's something you're believing for, that you just call it in. You, 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 God wants to do those things. I mean, that's what happened to us here just a couple of days ago. There's something that I was in my daily confessions that I've been prophesying for years, and all of a sudden, supernaturally, out of the blue, I get this phone call, and I realize that's it. This is the answer. This is the answer to the thing I've been speaking over myself for all, for, for all these years. Now, I personally think that it had to do with the camp meeting for, for the supernatural, that we were ministering on the supernatural. We're prophesying. We're speaking it, and all of a sudden, here it is. Here it happens. But I tell you, life in the supernatural is the fast lane. It's life in the fast lane. And uh, it's, it's life in the wild lane that you didn't even know God could do that for you. And, uh, and yet he, he does. So to call forth those things that be not as though they are at the highest order possible is done in tongues. Anyway, there's probably, there's other things as well, probably, that, you know, you can use tongues for. Uh, once again, I think worship, you know, uh, the Apostle Paul uh, talked about it, and he said, you know, he said, I, I, he said, w w what do I do then? I will sing with my natural language, but I'll sing in the Spirit. I'll pray with my natural language, but I'll pray in the Spirit. In other words, you pray in both. Now, uh, this First Corinthians 14 uh, uh, verse, uh, let's see what verse am I looking for here. Verse 13 says, Let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue also pray that he may interpret. In other words, sometimes you want to know what you're praying. Uh, and I'll give you an example of where I use this particular thing is, is if I have a dream and I don't have the interpretation of the dream and I need to get the interpretation of the dream, I'll begin to pray in tongues over that dream. And I'll believe God for the interpretation of it. And the way I do this, I'll just pray in tongues about it for a little bit. I'll, I'll think about the dream. I'll pray in tongues because with your, when you're praying in tongues, you're not praying with your mind. You're praying with your spirit. So my mind can think about the dream. My spirit can pray in the language of the spirit. And somehow I can get the interpretation of what that dream is. I, 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 I'd like to tell you I understand exactly how that works, but I do not. I mean, I don't know how it works. I don't know why it works that way, but I know that it does. And it works by faith. And you begin to release your faith that, you know, I got this dream, or I got a word from God, or I got a vision from God, or something from God, and I don't know what it means. Begin to pray in tongues. Because once again, when you're praying in tongues, you're, it's your spirit praying. Your spirit's down here. 
you can visualize that dream, you can visualize that vision or whatever it was you saw in your mind. So you got your mind looking at it, you got your spirit praying about it, and somehow the interpretation can come. And uh, I just, uh, uh, you know, I'll give you, an, let me give you an example. I, I had this dream one time, and I just, it was a long, involved, complex dream. I knew God wanted to speak to me, and I just didn't know what it was. So I'm praying in tongues about it, and I'm walking along, and I'll pray a few minutes in tongues, and then I'll see what comes up, you know. And one of the things that came up was one of the main characters was wearing glasses. And the what happened was, you remember like the old cartoons, you know, like Popeye, you know, they'd bang their hand in the hand, wah, 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 like that. Well, that's what was happening to the glasses. And this, it's a, it was a woman, she's wearing these glasses, and the glasses were flashing and the glasses were growing. In other words, what the purpose, what, what was coming up in tongues was, this person was wearing glasses. Why do people wear glasses? It's an aid to be able to see. And so the Holy, what the Holy Spirit was saying was, a key to this dream is glasses. That this person is seeing something they can't see with the unaided eye. There's something that they're looking at that they need an, an assistance, they need an aid to be able to see it. So in the realm of the spirit, it, it, was, a, it was all about spiritual glasses. It was about spiritual vision that I couldn't see. Well, that's what came up in, in the spirit. And the way that the Holy Spirit drew, drew my attention to it was the glasses were flashing, like, you know, flashing bigger and, 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 and so forth. And then they came to this, uh, it was like a door. You know, and they came to this door, and I'd not seen it before. The door was red, and uh, as I'm praying in tongues, I see the door red. What is a red door? It means stop, right? A red means stop. So, in other words, they came to a door, and the door said stop. You know, the deal was 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 stop. But I'm praying in tongues, and all of a sudden, I see this red door, this flashing red door. I didn't see it before. But now, as the Holy Ghost is, is, I'm praying in tongues, the Holy Ghost is, is pointing this thing up for me. So you get, you get the point. The, the, the point is this. There's a whole realm Amen. beyond what our natural mind can see, what our natural mind can interpret. And tongues is the doorway to that Amen. realm, and it's the bridge to the realm, Amen. if you will. It's not just the doorway, because the doorway gets you in. Amen. But it's a bridge that gets you back and forth Amen. between the two. In other words, you can get an interpretation of something that was in there. You can get the mind of Christ that's in there over a particular Amen. matter. You know, maybe you're praying over your calling, you're praying over your assignment, you're praying over your business, you're yes. praying over yes. your spouse, or you're praying over things that you don't have the capacity to see. My uh, um, uh, well, my oldest son was uh, was getting married. He, he said that, you know, he, he asked us to agree with him in prayer over, uh, you know, he wanted to marry the person God had for him to marry, period. And, you know, that was, he, he didn't want anything other than to marry the person that God had for him to marry. So he asked us to come into agreement with him uh, yes. that that's what was going to happen. So we did. And so I have this dream. And I have this dream about it. And I know God is talking to us about this situation, but I don't know what the answer is, you know. So I began to pray in tongues about it. And, uh, and what happened was I never did get the answer. But there were things revealed as I'm praying in tongues about the dream that I'm able to tell him. And then he get. And the reason was it wasn't for me to know. You know, it was for him to know. It wasn't for me to know. So I'm praying and I'm getting, you know, I'm getting uh, uh, the Lord speaking to me about that situation. But I don't know what he's saying because it wasn't for me. But when I told him, he knew what it was. And he, 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 he got it. So once again, the, the, the function of tongues is for the supernatural. It's for the realm that you don't dwell in, that you, that you don't speak in, that you can't. 
uh, move around in, and, and tongues. Uh, so once again, it's not just the entrance way. It's the bridge to go back and forth. It's the bridge to carry things back and forth. It's the bridge to call forth things that be not as though they are and pull them in to the realm of the natural. That's what happens in seed time and harvest. And seed time and harvest, and believe God for supernatural things, is you've got to get it from the realm of the supernatural. And you've got to get it into this realm. And tongues is how you do that. Tongues is the bridge that allows you to pull it in. Well, anyway, so I just encourage you, think about that. Go back and listen to this, you know, uh, from time to time. Go back and, and, and listen to this on Facebook, and you can listen to it. It'll be on YouTube, because it'll give you a, an idea of what to use tongues for. It was a gift. You know, the, the, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about gifts. There's nine gifts. Those gifts were the most powerful gifts given to humanity after after covenant. In other words, you had to make covenant to get that gift. If you hadn't made covenant, you wouldn't have gotten that gift. But once you made covenant with Jesus Christ and with God the Father and with the Holy Spirit, now he could bring gifts. And those nine gifts are the most powerful gifts that any human being could receive from God while he's on the earth here because they allow you to to tap in to the full range of the spirit and tongues and interpretation of tongues are two of those gifts that have extraordinary power and I just encourage you explore them, use them, play with them, listen to them you'll be glad you did anyway thank you so much for joining us tonight God bless you and we'll see you on Sunday On what? I don't know. It's a little early. A little, little early to make that decision.